Hello and welcome. My name is Sharon and this is Tree of Witches Tarot. And this is part four of all my decks A to Z. And I'm going to do D and try to get through to J. It's going to be a little over 30 decks. So we'll see how far I get. And this is the Dark Goddess Tarot. It's the mass market edition. Keep it in this bag because it comes in a big box. Love the Moonlit Fay bags. I keep a lot of those. And Skilded. And I forget who. Is it Schiffer? This feels like Schiffer cardstock. Red Feather Schiffer, yeah. It's not the worst cardstock. It's bendy. I don't think you can ruffle shuffle this. Anyway, so each card is a different goddess from all different cultures. And I really love this artwork. And it I don't, I haven't done like a full spread with it. More pull one card because there's a lot of information to digest in here. So I try to learn these different goddesses. Yeah, I love this artwork. So um, Ellen Lorenzi Prince has a Greek goddess tarot out now that you can get the indie version of. That will be in an upcoming video. So, Baba Yaga. So this is, you know, I'm sure you've seen this a million times. Love that card. It's uh, not featured so much, but recently, but it was all over the YouTubes for a while there. And I don't hate this glossy. I don't love it, but I'm not mad at it either. Just at the time. I'm not sure. I really do like this artwork though. Just something. And even though it's um, goddesses from many different cultures, it's very cohesive because it's a single art style. So let's lay some out and you'll see. Dark Goddess Tarot. Those are the backs. Kind of weird. So this is obviously the Darkness of Light Tarot. I have the separate printed guidebook. I think you have a PDF too. I think I have the PDF. So no pictures, but lots of info. And a lot of this is all about the deck. So you get to Major Arcana. So you've got 23 pages. And then the Minor Arcana is different information on it. And then just some keywords. So that's the guidebook. I have two editions of it. One I got secondhand without a bag. And it is the As Is edition the, with the white borders. So I've shown this before. But can see maybe from the side you can see that the um, the border on the top and bottom was different on the majors and the minors so mixed up you can't really tell and I prefer this cardstock and I prefer the white borders and then this is the linen edition this is what you can get now and it's linen so I find that the linen, to me, kind of clouds the clarity. And it's in a tuck box. And I, I'm not using this one, I'm using this one, so... It's just kind of a backup. And... Yeah. I really like this deck. I love... The the darkness of it and then these um, where the light pops through but when we get to the minor so let's starts with the swords the wands 
you know what I need to do is put these in the same order. So hold please. This time it's the Divine Canine Tarot. And I, I can't remember if this guidebook is extra or not either. This has been a while since I got this one. It's kind of weird because the box seems like it has space for a guidebook and then this seems like it was formatted for a smaller guidebook. So I don't know if the intent was originally to have it be small enough to fit in the box. At any rate, um, it's a nice little guidebook. And it is, as the name suggests, and it's the, which is the backs at the bottom there. It's gilded. And I got it from Cosmic Corner Savannah. You can go online, order it. And it is a nice colorful deck with foxes and coyotes and kitsune and wolves. I like the auroras in it. A lot of auroras in it. It's very expressive. The expressions on the canines' faces tell a story. I think this is one of those Japanese raccoon dogs or whatever. Let me look real quick. Yes, uh, Tanyoki. Uh, in Japanese folklore, Tanyoki are associated with prosperity and good fortune. Yeah, they're like some kind of raccoon dog. So there's a lot of different kinds of canids in here. I think there's hyenas even. I really like this. You don't see this. Um, I don't even know how I discovered it because I don't think I've ever seen a YouTube video with this deck in it. There's a hyena. I like that moon. It's on the front of the book. So, yeah. I like this. It's the Divine Canine. And it's a it's nice cardstock. It's a little heavier. Anyway, the Divine Canine. And this is the Divine Feminine Tarot, the Nocturnal Edition. And I never noticed that little gold dot on it. It's the second edition, looks like. <clears throat> Inside the box, very pretty. Kind of matches the backs. And I think it comes with this guidebook. I don't think you have to pay separate for this. And I think it's a nice guidebook. I like it. This is a very, very soft, very feminine deck. A lot of nudity, nudity warning. And it's just the black and white and gold, more of a cream color. A lot of mermaids, so you got me at mermaid. Everybody's just kind of floating in space. And everybody's thin, not crazy thin, but thin. And I like this deck. I like that card. A little bling on that one there. And there's only one or two figures in each card, I think. It's a nice, that almost reminds me of strength. And it's nice cardstock. It's a little thin for me, but it um, it's very shuffleable. And this one is by Co Karina. They have a a diurnal edition, which is white with black, white backgrounds with black. I think so I can't remember. Um, so anyway, that is the Divine Feminine Tarot.
And this is The Elemental Tarot by Carolyn Smith and John Astrop. And I don't know what edition this is. Does it say in here? I know you can get it again now. This is from 1999, it looks like. Um, I think you can get it again now. I don't know what, what, what difference that might be. I keep it in this bag. I forget. I think it came in some weird book box thing. I, I can't recall now. It's been a while. I don't have the box anymore. And I trimmed mine. This is one of the first... It was on really... It is on really, really thin cardstock. I mean, this is super thin still. And I, um, before I had my laminator, I just used clear contact paper. And it is on the front and the back. Right? Or is it only in the backs? I can't tell. I think it's only on the backs. It made it slightly thicker. Trimmed to make it smaller, and that was even before I had a guillotine cutter, so I did it with scissors. So it's not perfect, but it's good enough. I used nail clippers for the edges. Anyway, so it was a little bit different than your average tarot. But it has good information for each card. Not a ton, but enough. And it's a fun little deck. I love Carolyn's, Carolyn Astrop's artwork. I have many decks with her artwork. So let's have a look. So we have, so this is, these are earth, the green ones. And then we have fire. And then fire, the red. And then the majors are blue, and they have this oval. And the numbers remain the same. And then they have these little sayings on them, and a keyword. And interestingly, so like this one is justice, but then it has this piece up here. This one's death, and it has transformation. I don't know confused now on why sometimes it's the name we know on the top, sometimes on the bottom. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a different deck. It takes getting used to. It's a cool moon. I like that sun. Judgment. And then we have the Aeon. We have daughter, son. Mother and father. Air, sort of this aqua color. And then we have water. I like the water suit in this. Sort of this lilac color. I like the way that Carolyn Astrop does water in her decks. Sort of that curly, flowy look. A lot of big nipples in this deck. So that's the, instead of the High Priestess, we have Virgin and Receptivity. Interesting. Definitely. If you're trying to learn RWS Tarot, this is not a deck. I don't even, it, it's its own thing. It's its own thing. It's the Elemental Tarot. And this is the El Goliath Tarot deck, which I, I think it's out of print now. I don't know. I saw many posts on Instagram. Keep it in this bag. It comes in a big box. Um, that if you wanted it, you should get it. Because it won't be producing it anymore or selling it anymore or something. So maybe OOP now. And this is the second edition. So it's on the smaller cards and matte cardstock instead of glossy. Like the first edition was big, much bigger. 
and very glossy. If you do a comparison of a regular tarot, it's fairly much bigger. It's just black and white. It has extra oracle cards, so you have a yes and a no card, and then all of these. I'm not going to go through them all, but this is an amazing deck. This is like Marielle if it was an animal deck. And it is the guidebook is so much information and it's very small print. So and all of that is for one card. I need my reading glasses for sure. I think that this though is a bigger print than the first edition, at least what I've heard, that the first edition is even harder to read. But there is, yeah, there's a lot. So the thing that gets me the most in this is the, the quality of light in it, the way things just beam. such an amazing deck. It pulls no punches. It's unapologetic. It's uh, kind of like the black and white cousin to the Brady Tarot. Look at that. It just glows. It's an amazing deck. I will never let this go. And it comes edged in black, I believe. So if you don't have it and you want it, I hope you can get it because this is one of my forever decks. So that's the El Goliath. And this is the Ellis deck tarot. This is the fifth edition black and white backs. I don't really know what the differences are between the editions. I'm pretty sure that there are differences. I just don't know what they are. There is, as it says on the back here, you can get a companion ebook or there's a PDF. So I have the PDF that I printed out. I should see about the ebook. It is gilded and it's nice flexible cardstock. It feels like uh, like make playing cards, cardstock maybe. So I'll show you the. This is. So how many pages is this? 170. 174 pages. So that's a lot. I think it's in color and I put it in black and white just because it's a lot. Don't want to waste all my colored ink. So a lot of information on each card. And it's a lot. I should see about the ebook though. So that's that. And this is a very to me a very fun, very fa fairy tale fay kind of deck. It also it's fun on the surface and then when I think back on it and I do a reading with it, it feels like it was more serious than it was on the surface, if that makes any kind of sense at all. And I like that there's different font on the cards. I like this, I don't know, is this vector art? I don't know. I don't know things about art. There's mermaids. Mer people. It's very colorful. It it feels like uh, the less weird cousin of the uh, Rain Coast Tarot because it's still weird, but it's less weird than Ring Coast. 
it's like the Disney version of the Raincoast Tarot. Yeah, I like this. It's kind of like if um, Raincoast Tarot and Tarot of the Divine had a tarot deck baby, it would be this. So that is the Ellis deck, and I'm pretty sure it's available. If it's not, it's one of those things that probably comes in and out of availability. And this is the Emma Poetica Tarot, which you can get from the um, Wild Editions, whatever it is. Um, the same website that sells Celia Melsville's decks, you know, Lily White and Lily Black. This is on there. And the Boo Tarot, they sell this too. And it's the same format where they have the little cards. But there is no additional little white book that you can purchase. And it is in French and English. So those are the backs. Don't love this cardstock, although I don't hate it. Just kind of, when you shuffle it, if you ruffle shuffle it, it kind of holds whatever bend you put in it. See, so it's kind of like not fully straight. Kind of holds on to it. I think the Boo Tarot is this same cardstock, but for some reason my Boo Tarot is just like really bowed and wants to, no matter what I do, once I put it back in the box, it wants to bow up again. So this is a little bit, it's very pippish and it feels like collage and then painted over collage and a lot of it feels like kind of like that torn paper. It almost feels like, uh, you guys see in this card, I think this card came bent like this. Not psyched about that. Just isn't the greatest card stock. I don't know why they didn't publish this in the Butero on the same cardstock that Lily White and Lily Black are on, because those are amazing cardstock. Anyway, yes, it is a Pippish deck. Although not like Marseille level Pip, but Pip. Like the blue snakes. I forget what the name of those are. I thought they were just made up and my daughters pointed out to me that no, in fact, those are real. So they were in a, those blue snakes are in another deck I have. Now I can't think of what it is. If you know of the other deck that has blue snakes in it, please let me know. It is a very sweet deck. It's non-confrontational. Just nice. A nice tarot that doesn't yell at you. Sometimes you want to be yelled at. Sometimes you don't. Like the foxes in it. So that is the Emma Poetica Tarot. And this is the Ember and Aura Tarot. And I have the regular edition and the awakening edition. And this is out of print now. And I don't think that Jamie Richardson is planning on printing this anymore. So this is totally OOP now. That's the awakening. They come with a guidebook, which is essentially the same little teeny thumbnails. And then this, it is um, unabashedly with a Christian bent on it. I believe that Yes, the deck was conceived during her stay at Sanctuary of the Rose. And I believe that, yes, yeah, so that she's Episcopalian. I don't, she may have turned her back on tarot entirely. I'm not really sure. I love this deck. I mean, tarot does have at its roots um, Christianity, a lot of it. So I'm not bothered by the sometimes very overt Christian symbolism portrayed in this deck. So the backs are different and the gilding, both pink. One is just one of my favorite death cards ever. So the font is also different. We'll do more of a side by side, I guess. Okay, so there's death and death. So you see the difference there. It's the same image.
And there we go, the star. It's just a different kind of coloration. I really, really like this day. This is one of my hug decks. And I will never let go of either of these copies of this deck. Love it so much. Love the fool. So these are, I think, the awakening. It's more of a white background, or these are more framed. Love that Empress. The Emperor. High Priest. I just love the sack. Really just love it. So. Okay, so that is the Ember and Aura, the Awakening and the regular edition. And this is the Enchanted Terror. This is the 25th anniversary edition, which I found, I think, on eBay um, because it's, I think they're on the 30th anniversary or 35th anniversary edition now. But I liked the, I like this book. It's a very nice book. Um, and it comes with this bag. But I like the backs on this the best of any. Just love those backs. And I trimmed mine. So it is thinner and not quite as tall. But it's still very tall. So let's grab a regular tarot sized tarot card. So it's still wider and it is considerably taller and it was a lot taller and a lot wider. So I trimmed it down, preserved um, enough of the colored border that I still, you still see it. And it was a frustrating exercise because the artwork is not centered on the cards perfectly and they are miscentered, if that's a word, differently. Anyway, um, I had the mini, I gave it away in one of my giveaways. I just felt like it was um, too small to really see all the detail. And I have big hands, so I don't really, minis I sort of fumble around because they're like a little small for me. But this is a, they've been around for a long time, obviously, if this is the 25th anniversary edition. And this was in, to where is the year? So it was orig originally published in the United States in 1990. So that's... How old it is. And you can get this, um, I mean, many different editions of this. You can get it on Amazon or Book Depository, or you can go on eBay and find whatever edition you want. I just happen to like these backs. But I like them. So I sought out this edition. And it comes in a nice box. Just, um, again, I don't keep my decks in big boxes. I'd have no room to store them if I kept all the big boxes in my bookshelf. Like that. So that's the Enchanted Tarot. And this is the Everyday Enchantment Tarot by Puppy Palin, who sadly left us last year. And... It is very modern. It's kind of like a, an English um, light sears, maybe, in that modern take on things, people in their modern day lives. And there's a lot of info for each card in this book as well. And this is, is this, who publishes this? Schiffer also. And it comes in a big box, so I keep the cards in this bag. I've trimmed mine. I may edge it. I just haven't figured out how I want to edge it yet. So the borders were much bigger, and the, each suit is color-coded. 
and so the, the cards were so big that I couldn't even overhand it. Now I I have giant hands and now I can at least overhand it. At any rate, um, this is, so we have blades for swords, coins, and then the major arcana are black borders, wands, some more blades. And then there are sprinkled throughout fairies. So there is magic. Magic in the everyday. Which is what I like about it. And I'm not British and I don't think you need to be British to get it all. I imagine there's nuances that are lost on us across the pond. So, yep, yeah, that's the everyday enchantment. Those are the backs. They're very pretty. And I'm leaning towards edging it, edging it in green. Or this, this blue is really pretty. I wonder if blue would be better. I don't know. If you have a vote on how I should edge this, let me know. The everyday enchantment. And this is the Ethereal Visions Luna Edition. This is the indie edition and you can get it I think on US games now and I saw a video and I think that the cardstock is significantly different to the point where I'm glad I have this even though it cost a lot more and I'm not sure about the guidebook if the mass market guidebook is different or not I think it's your pretty standard meanings for the cards. Those are the backs. I think the backs are the same. Don't know about the size. So these are bigger than your standard tarot. Let's get out a card. I don't know if the mass market one is standard tarot size or if it's larger like this. I'd have to go back and rewatch. I think uh, I will share a link to her video, Mixtress Ray did kind of a, she called it a spicy. It was a little bit of a takedown on this deck and can't uh, entirely disagree with a lot of the things she said. Um, it's gilded. Can't remember if the mass market one was gilded. This is thin cardstock. It's nice and flexible. I, I'm not mad at it. I don't hate it. And this is with this kind of silver holographic A lot of purple in it. I like that. There is there is more diversity in this than there is in the original Ethereal Visions, but it's um, still not very diverse. This is one of the extra cards. The extra. I don't know if you have this in the U.S. Games version of it, and then another one. So there's different. There's some darker skin tones, some different facial features, but there isn't a whole lot of age diversity and not a whole lot of body diversity. Um, I mean, she's not skinny. I, I love this deck. I'm not, I don't have any qualms with it. I'm just pointing out for you and if you care to see more of a takedown on it, I think Mixtress Ray takes exception with this modern hairstyle, the shaved head, and she didn't like this baby's face. I think that baby's cute. But I think almost all babies are cute. And she called this a Beyonce card. I could be wrong. 
I think it's very pretty. I like it. I don't mind that it's uh, Art Nouveau style and then there's some little modern things. I mean, this is The Fool is wearing much more, has fairly modern clothing. So it isn't, and this guy, fairly modern clothing. It isn't sticking altogether to the time period. This High Priestess is the same, I think she's on the cover of the other Three Visions, but it's gold instead of silver. I don't know. I don't have the other. I wanted this one. I don't, I, didn't, I don't have the other one, so I can't do like a side by side for you and compare. I'm trying to find the world card. I like her. Oh, that's the other one with the shaved head hairstyle. Doesn't bother me. Okay. Oh, here's the Beyonce card. There we go. Okay, found the world card. I love her. So anyway, this is the Ethereal Visions Luna Edition. Okay, so that is my D and E decks. I only made it to E. I thought I would get further. It's a lot of work making these videos. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you have any comments, please leave them below. Remember to like and subscribe and click on the bell so you know it. And I have new videos. Stay tuned for the giveaway that will be going on until I am done producing all of my A to Z videos. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourself. Bye. Okay, so I've decided to do a giveaway for the length of all of my decks A to Z videos. So whenever I am done doing all of those videos, this giveaway will end. And it's for the Dreaming Way Tarot. It's a mass, mar mass market deck. And you've probably seen this before. I'm not going to do a full flip through. It's a very nice deck. Just isn't one that I use. So I've decided to give it away.